Awkward experiences can be rough, but getting the chance to live vicariously through them with some of your favorite animated characters might actually make them hilarious. <laughs> I'm not trendy. I'm out of date. I'm unhip. I'm not cool. I'm square. I'm beat. I'm lame. I'm old. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 socially awkward cartoon characters. Well, I guess it's time to step it up a notch. For this list, we're looking at animated or cartoon characters that are unable to effectively interact with the outside world, whether it be due to their introversion, illiteracy with social cues, or just plain unpleasantness. No! No, I couldn't! Also note that we'll be covering only one character per franchise. <sighs> Number 10. Raven. Teen Titans. Cinderblock escaped. No amount of yelling will change that. So stop acting like idiots and let's go home. This mistress of the dark arts proves to be one of the most integral members of her superhero team. But she may have missed the memo on the whole team concept. Is there someone in there? Just me. And a really good book. Oh. Well, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Better than okay. As the most secluded and distant member of the Teen Titans, Raven appears rather emotionless when she's interacting with others. When she's interacting at all, that is. So? Come on, Raven, admit it. You were totally scared. I don't do fear. In her defense, she actually has to safeguard her emotions because, if they were to become compromised, they could cause her powers to respond erratically and she could harm others unintentionally. My mind is never troubled. People come, people go. It's pointless to be upset about Cyborg. What? She's commonly found meditating in her room, but the wise would know not to disturb her. Why are you always locked in your dark room reading your nasty old books? Why do you have to be so creepy? Forget it, B. Leave her alone. I'm not creepy. I'm just different. Number 9. Steve Smith, American Dad. Ow! Hi, Lisa. Did that hurt so good? It's Steve. Steve Smith. Remember me? Ah, uh, it'll come to you. Hey, you wanna go out Friday night? Oh, who wasn't an awkward teen? That's it! I just need to get a dog, and women will be all over my jock! The baby of the Smith family, Steve embodies every adolescent outcast with his signature thick-rimmed glasses and deep interest in chemistry. Well, I'm back from the Chemistry Olympiad! I got a platinum medal! When he isn't getting himself into trouble, Steve can be found playing Dungeons and Dragons with his friends or doing any number of other nerdy things. Steve, what are you doing? We've beamed down to a planet of strange men in swaddling clothes. What's your reading, Chekhov? His unconfident behavior primarily stems from his desperate need for approval from his neoconservative Republican father, Stan. Wow. Maybe someday, if I study hard enough, I can be as smart as you. Attempting to raise Steve to become like himself, the senior Smith only succeeds in breaking his son's self-esteem, which obviously doesn't help him around other kids or in social situations. <laughs> as you can see, I'm going to do very well. Number eight. Gus Griswold, Recess. Well, my name is Gus. I've been to 12 schools in the past six years, and my only friend is a pet snake named Herbert. It's never easy being the new kid at school, especially when you're as socially inept as this character. With his father in the military, Gus has found it incredibly hard to make friends throughout his young life, as he's frequently had to switch schools. I've been to 12 schools in six years, and nobody's ever been so nice to me before. It's so Beautiful! Thanks to the amicable recess crew that befriends Gus on his first day at 3rd Street Elementary, though, he is quickly accepted and able to learn the stringent rules of the playground. Now over there is the jock section. They're basically harmless, but you could get a nasty wedgie. However, despite his natural good-naturedness, Gus has the tendency to become quite the tyrant when he's put into positions of power. I have it! Henceforward, all kids on the playground shall every day be required to render onto me two cookies. So, don't even think about giving him the dodgeball. I had all the shots. Sliders, curves, speedy, skippers, ricochets, faders, and a knuckler that can leave a kid back afraid. Number 7. Dean Venture, The Venture Brothers. I just realized I don't know your name. It's Dean! Dean Venture! And stop getting old big hands on me! Dean! One of the two boys of Rusty Venture, enthusiastic Dean is as quaint as he is naive. Nice spy clothes, douche. What? I didn't have any black. I figured, cowboy, next best thing to spies, right? Because he goes on full-time adventures with his father and his fraternal twin, Hank, Dean and his brother haven't been able to interact with kids their own age. Brock, I think I figured out why the plane crashed. There were skeletons driving it. This, unsurprisingly, leaves them less than perceptive to normal social cues. 
They are also homeschooled through subliminal learning aids installed in their beds. I know. To the learning beds, dude! I am not getting in that thing with stinky old Venturestein. What's he doing in there anyway? Even though Dean is portrayed as the more nerdy of the two, his awkwardness allowed him some success in piquing the interest of his crush, Triana Orpheus, who is probably the only friend he's made that is his own age. Hey, are you a pirate? What are you talking about? Because one time, my family was held captive by pirates. Who are ghosts? And you have a Jolly Roger on your blouse, so I thought... Number 6. Butter is staunch. South Park. <laughs> Hi, I'm Professor Chaos, and now this puny world will bow down to me. <laughs> Never has there been a kid so hopelessly optimistic that you almost feel sorry for him. I am sick and tired of everyone telling me I'm confused. Being severely sheltered his whole life, Butters is quite the impressionable young boy. And thanks to his peers, he often finds himself in the most uncomfortable of predicaments within the South Park series. This picture I like to call the Pierre. I invited Butters to stay the night, and while he was sleeping I made a mustache on his face with cat poo. Despite his natural innocence and good nature, he suffers from his own gullibility, which inevitably lands him, more often than not, to be punished by his parents. Which is, you know, one of his biggest fears. Butters, what are you doing? I'm getting a surprise! Poor Butters. The world isn't fair. I do everything people ask me to. I stand in the lunch lines for them. I buy tampons at the store for them. I go on Mori Povich with balls on my chin for them. Number five, Earl of Lemon Grab, Adventure Time. So pleased and gracious to welcome you to our sophisticated society. In Adventure Time, the ruler of the Earldom of Lemon Grab manages to successfully become a social pariah with his inability to connect with people. And who says your way's right anyway? I look in the lemon heart you gave me and see my lemon way to act, and that must be right! He is a failed experiment of Princess Bubblegums, and is eventually banished from the Candy Kingdom. I don't understand you, Lemon Grab! No one! No one understands! I am alone, and you made me like this! So while he could be considered a victim of his own circumstances, his brash behavior and short-temperedness give those around him little to no sympathy for his situation. You are in my reconditioning chamber. You will receive four to three units of juice now. <laughs> Lemon Grab is high-strung and has a total disregard for basic social cues. And this is what leaves the lone dictator basically friendless. All unfit citizens of Lemon Grab must be reconditioned! Man, are you crazy? Yeah! Oh, me! Number four, Meg Griffin, Family Guy. Mmm, wow, this is good. What's in there? Well, there's some apples and some cinnamon and my hair. What? My hair is in the pie, Brian. And now it's inside of you. Meg is usually considered the most uninteresting, depressed, and disliked character in the Griffin household, and she is relentlessly harassed for it. That's right, folks, it's gonna be a Meg episode. Stick around for the fun. Here's the clicker. No one would blame you. Whether it's because she's the oldest or the only daughter, her whole family has mutually decided to treat her as an outcast. My point being that I'm a bully, not a nerd. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Dad! This is especially true of her father, who is quick to quip, shut up, Meg, whenever she gets on his nerves, which is pretty much always. Oh, look at him sleep. Oh, I wonder what he's dreaming about. Shut up, Meg. The self-conscious and insecure Meg hasn't been able to make many friends outside of the house either, as her obsessive behavior tends to scare people away. I'm back. I brought another picnic. You're such a good listener. You're not like the other boys. <laughs> You're so good with animals. Number three, Mailhouse Van Houten, The Simpsons. Hello, I'm Dr. Hibbert. I'm afraid I'm going to have to amputate your butt. <laughs> oh, right, if you think you must. What's a mischievous little troublemaker without his bumbling, awkward friend? Milhouse just so happens to be that friend to Bart Simpson, who lives to exploit the kid's naivete to his own advantage. Hey, Milhouse, would you like a wet willy? Sure. Ew! Neither can particularly say how they became friends. But when the two aren't committing pranks, Millhouse is frequently seen striking out with the ladies. I guess you could say I want to bring out the Millhouse in Nelson. But I'm all Millhouse! His social anxiety doesn't only keep him from finding a girlfriend for a long time. 
but he's also usually the butt of some very cruel jokes. Will I get beat up today? All signs point to yes. That ball knows everything. <laughs> Number two, Tina Ruth Belcher. Bob's Burgers. Bless your Jimmy Jr. and you're here to kiss my lips, I don't wanna talk to you. The life of a hopeless romantic is tough, especially when that person comes off with little to no social skills. Hey, I noticed you have an RSVP to my party yet. Um, I need to ask my dad for permission. Can I let you know later? Sure, okay. But Tina's a sweet soul just looking for some lovin', but her uncomfortable fetishes and fantasies leave her as unapproachable as they come. Tina's favorite hobby is demonstrated by her love for writing fan fiction, especially zombie romances. Wait, I'm going to class with you. Tina, what are you doing? Dad, you don't understand. What keeps most people from connecting with her is Tina's tendency to stay inside her own head. But my body needs it. Although she can be seen letting out her signature awkward moan when she's distressed. If you need me, I'll be down here on the floor, dying. All right, sounds good, honey. Uh... Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. What's going down? Who's the pig? Piglet? Man, he's cool. Man, I am not cool. I'm stopped. By what? Yeah, man, right here, it's the bomb. We've broken the law. Not only have we taken one's personal belongings, but add to it abduction and detaining one against the will. Something that'll really make them suffer. Um, well, uh, it's healthy to air these feelings, I think. Bill, get out. Lenore! Bill! I want to stay and mingle. Lenore, who is me, sure does love a party. Party, party! I don't know if a knife is necessary. I mean, you know, y you kind of had things handled without You're it. You're telling me how to bully now? Number one, Kiff Croker, Futurama. I suppose, Captain. I'm not as big a fan of velour as you are. Being an unconfident, nervous guy in the 31st century has got to be tough. But being that, as well as the personal lapdog to douchebag space captain Zap Brannigan has got to be worse. Kiff, follow me up to the observation deck. I've got some musing to do. Kiff is an amphibiosin who's rarely seen far away from the 25-star general, and all too often bellies up doing some of the really degrading tasks demanded of him. Who are you talking to, sir? You. Aren't you getting this? <sighs> Clearly unhappy with his position, Kiff is far too stifled to stand up for himself or seek out friends of his own. Now what do you want to do about that unidentified ship? The first officer has only displayed any sort of assertiveness when it's come down to the well-being of his one true love, Amy Wong. So at least he's got that saving grace. Shall I fire on them now, sir? Do you agree with our list? No, I swear! I made it up, like kids do! What cartoon character's awkwardness makes you cringe? We're all gonna die! Not necessarily. For more top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. As of now, you're in command. Congratulations, Captain.